Let's continue our look into the preferences within Ableton Live. We'll come up to the top, and we'll click on Preferences, and we'll start with the MIDI Sync tab. Now in section 1403, where we talked about MIDI inputs and tracks, we talked about this first column here of getting MIDI in and out of a track. Again, the top one is getting MIDI inputs, and then down here, this would be assigning tracks to have the MIDI output go to different devices. In the center, we have the ability to enable sync signals coming in and sync signals to be sent out. Then over to the right, we have the ability to discuss whether something's going to be used for remote control as a control surface within Ableton Live. And Ableton Live is very powerful at working with these types of devices. Additionally, up top, we have the ability to go even further and decide whether something is a control surface or not. We can pull down lists and choose something. And for example, let's say you had the UC33E, and you can assign its inputs and outputs here. Once you did that, you would also have access to this dump button. So if you actually had a 33E or similar device hooked up that can receive a dump, Ableton Live would dump a set of memories into that device so it would work well with Ableton Live as a control surface. So we'd, you would assign that device, then you have the input and output ports assigned to match this connection on your interface, and then if it has a dump within Ableton's memory, you'll see this button become active. Down below we have something called takeover mode. Now this means when you move a controller, do you want it to have no response if there's already control action in place? Do you want it to pick it up or start following the action when the knob gets to where our last automation was? So let's say our pan is in the center, and the knob that I'm moving is off to the left. As I turn it towards center, nothing happens. But once I get in, into the center, it will pick up the current position because it matches it, and then track the rest of my changes. The most common and almost always set should be value scaling. Taking the previous example, if I had my pan control in the center and my pan knob on my controller all the way to the left, as I started turning my pan knob, it would be coming more to the left and start scaling in so that they would meet somewhere in the middle. So just the short answer is leave takeover mode in value scaling. And we have a little bit of extra time here, so I'm going to talk about the CPU. Now if you have a multi-processor or multi-core CPU, you want to turn this on. And if you're using Rewire, you have the option to turn that on also. But here we have a plug-in buffer size. Now if you're using a plug-in, a VST or AU plug-in, you generally want to leave this to be set at the same size as your basic audio buffer. Now that's one reason why I like leaving my audio buffer at some of these values that are basically exponents of 2. This is 2 to the 8th etc etc etc. So if you want a small one come down here and if you want another one at 2048 that's pretty large but remember to match that over in your audio preferences so I'll leave that here. Okay that concludes a look at our MIDI and our basic CPU preferences. In general you always want to check out all your preferences in a software take a little time maybe once a week and look at these and read them in the manual. We can't spend an entire video training on these. I just tried to capture some of the big ones. But again, check them out. Learn a little bit once a week about them, and you'll get more out of your software. I'm closing my preferences now, and we're back in Ableton Live.